turn one, lap 256 of 280. Petty was losing a lot of steam from the car in the pits only a few moments ago. Allison, meanwhile, has just tagged onto the back of the bunch. Hasn't been a good day for Kyle Petty. 27-year-old Kyle Petty of High Point, North Carolina, is a third-generation NASCAR racer who promises to follow in the footsteps of his grandpa Lee and his daddy Richard. Now into his 10th season of competition, Carl won the very first race he entered, the ARCA 200 at Daytona. But it wasn't until 85 when he joined the Wood Brothers team that consistency and success came hand in hand. Season 87 produced two super speedway victories. None more satisfying, though, than the World 600 at Charlotte, North Carolina, when he steered the Sitco Thunderbird to the checkered flag for an $89,000 payoff. Career earnings have already topped the $2 million mark for Kyle, still somewhat shy of his father's $6.6 million total. And again, Daddy has taken 29 years to amass his nest egg. The racing pennies are NASCAR folk heroes with a huge spectator following. And young Kyle would give anything to be the first family member to win on foreign soil here today. Race cam with Neil Bonnet in the Valvoline Pontiac. Herschel McGriff once again gets a run down on the inside of the lap car. Hasn't he been a strong performer today? He could have could outlast a lot of them the way he's going at the moment. Car number 98, Herschel McGriff, 60 years of age. What did I say? He started in 1945. He gets a new car, he'll be a dynamo when he reaches 70. <laughs> so the man who sits on the inside, down a lap, Herschel McGriff, 60 years of age. Neil Bonnet, of course, who has reached the 40 mark and sitting back behind him in third place is, of course, Bobby Allison, who is 50 years of age in the pace car about to come to the pit area and Allison doesn't have to tag onto the end of the field he in fact goes up on the high line run right. goes into his third position if you're wondering what that's all about as we approach the restart ready now for the final run we have had 25 lead changes as of lap 255 we're ready to go racing in the final sprint for the Goodyear 500 from Calder Park Neil Bonnet leads the Jordan Pack down into turn number one. Herschel McGriff sticks it down on the inside of Dave Marcus as they swing out of there. And back behind Marcus is Bobby Allison who really needs to get on with this if he's going to haul in Neil Bonnet. They work the back straight. McGriff on the inside. Dave Marcus still running strongly up there in second spot. The number 71 car. Private Deer, Winston Cup Racing, doing a splendid job here down under today. Across the start finish line. Allison is just sprinting down the inside this time of Herschel McGriff, almost a touch of fenders, but he'll force his way back to an inside run through turn number two. Yes, he does just that. He catches Marcus out wide as they work the back straight. Allison, the tyres now working. He's on the hunt, going after Neil Bonnet. Close by Dave Marcus as they go up into turn number three, drops it on the uh, low side. Marcus is in for the draft. And at this stage, as they come on the straight, there's probably a five car length break. Neil Bonnet across the line. Bobby Allison, then Dave Marcus. You might wonder why so many of these cars are limping around at the back of the pack. If you finished in 15th place, you've still got $7,000 to play with. And look at Herschel McGriff. He knows how much money's at stake. He wants to be a part of this first ever Australian NASCAR stock car race at the right end of the field. Battling at the moment with Dave Marcus coming off turn four. In towards the trioval. Allison in the foreground. Marcus alongside McGriff and Bonnet disappearing into the western sunset. Can he make it two wins or two weekends in a row? That would certainly please him greatly. Lynn Manley and all the folks from Valvoline back in the United States. Neil Bonnet, 75. Raymock, Valvoline Pontiac, out to 1.6 seconds. He's still pulling time on Bobby Allison. He's up for 42,000 US dollars if he can pick a win or 59,000 Aussie dollars. And Bobby Allison really trying to do everything he can within his power at the moment to take the gap, but the car just does not seem to have the grip that Bonnet's car has. Down through the trioval, yet again, Allison, the man on the charge, trying to pull back inch by inch on the race leader, Neil Bonnet. A long way back to Dave Marcus, who runs in third. In fact, Marcus has dropped off the pace appreciably in the last couple of laps. And here's the man who's done everything right in Australia, the land down under for the Goodyear 500. Sweeps down the back straight. Gap is back to 1.2 seconds. Turn number four now comes up. As they come out of there down through the trioval. oval Gap's down to 0.93 with two laps to go. Less than a second separating first and second with just over three hours to go. And a wreck coming out of turn four.
JC Danielson spins. Yellow flag will come out, or will it? If he can clear the circuit, it I may not in fact come out. No, I think he's okay. He's uh, pulled back out onto the racetrack, and I don't think he's left any oil or debris up there. That would have been a cruel blow for Bobby Allison, oh, yeah. who has really scored Bill Bonnet. We're waiting for the white flag. It's coming out. The Goodyear 500 comes down to the last lap, and we have Bobby Allison closing on race leader Neil Bonnet as they head off the trioval down into turn number one. Half a second, 0.56 separating them as they make the run down the back straight for the last time. They've got cars to uh, wind in and out of before they reach turn number three. Neil Bonnet driving for the Raymond Valvoline team halfway using the low side of the circuit. The team is ready to jump. Turn four out, down through the trioval. The chequered flag is at the ready and Neil Bonnet and the Valvoline Pontiac strikes gold. Second place will go to Bobby Allison in the number 12 Buick and third place is Dave Marcus in the number 71 car. What a waste, what a drive from Neil Bonnet. At the placings in the Goodyear 500, the race winner, Neil Bonnet from Alabama. Second, Bobby Allison of Alabama. Third, Dave Marcus. Fourth spot going to Summer McKnight, a great ride. To Glenn Stirrer. We'll be back in a moment. You guys here, Neil. Hey, congratulations, Neil. You're really on a roll. What at Richmond and out here in, in Australia. What kind of a day was it for you? Well, it wasn't as easy as it looked like. Bobby got awful good when the race started. He's an expert at setting a chassis in hot weather. And Bobby had his car in good shape, but my guy just kept coming back every time we'd pit and work on the car. You know, first thing I want to do is thank these Australian people for being so nice to us over here. We've had a good time. What about that big crash up there? Were you close? No, but they called me on the radio and said it's a bad wreck. How's Alan Grison's guys? Everybody okay? He's got a broken collarbone. Other than that, he's okay. Well, I hate to hear that for Alan, but I'm glad everybody's not hurt any worse than that. Okay, congratulations, Neil. But let me get a word here with Bobby. Bobby, you're huffing and puffing, huh? Yeah, Chris, it, uh, you know, it was a hard run there at the end. Uh, you know, we are just trying our best to catch up with Neil, and uh, he had a little too much stuff for us there at the end. What about the track? Did it get better as the race wore on? Yeah, the track was good. Uh, it's bumpy, and the, the rise going in the corner gave the guys a lot of trouble. But uh, it's a nice track, and Bob Jane deserves a lot of credit for uh, putting this thing together down here. How about that big crash, Bobby? Were you near that? No, fortunately, I was ahead of it, so uh, I didn't see anything of what happened. Okay, congratulations, and good luck. Let's get a hold of Dave Marcus over here. Dave, what are you frowning about? It's a tough race, Chris. Neil and Bobby were real good. You know, their cars were working good. And I had to drive really hard all day just to try and keep up to them. But I enjoyed it. It's a nice facility, and it's a great honor to come over here in Australia and be in the first NASCAR event. So I had a great time. Uh, what did you have for breakfast, Dave? I saw you pull alongside of Bobby Allison there. You went wild there about 50 laps ago. What happened? Well, Chris, I, you know, we're running up front, and that's what racing's all about. And I know these Australian people want to see a good race, so we try and give them a good show. Well, you certainly did that. Congratulations, Dave. Thank you. Okay, that's the story from Victory Land. It's been a great race. Yeah. And for Chris Economac here, I want to say to my good friends down in this part of the country, happy birthday, Australia.